Hi everyone, welcome to the uh, last talk of the conference. I'm Aishwarya and today I'm going to be presenting our work on strong and efficient consistency with consistency of durability. Distributed storage systems form the basis of many modern web services like uh, social media, ride sharing, etc. One important aspect of a distributed system is the consistency model the system provides. Consistency models define what reads see given a set of previous reads and writes. A number of consistency models have been proposed by researchers and practitioners, and at one end of the spectrum, we have strong models like linear reciprocity. And at the other end of the spectrum, we have weaker models like eventual consistency. And then there are a number of other models in between. These models are fairly well studied and fairly well understood. Although we have studied these consistency models for many years, we have paid only scant attention towards another important aspect of a distributed system, which is its durability model. Durability models define how writes are replicated and persisted across many nodes in the system. And this durability model strongly influences the consistency model the system can provide, and it also determines how good the system can perform. And despite this importance, we find that these durability models are often overlooked. We find that two durability models are popular, and most systems use either one of these durability models. In one approach that we call immediate durability, when a, when a client wants to perform a write, the write is synchronously replicated and persisted on many nodes in the system before acknowledging the client. This enables the system to provide strong consistency guarantees, but the downside is that the system would be too slow because of synchronous operations. Given the per performance problems of immediate durability, many systems use what we call eventual durability, in which a write is just buffered in one node's memory and immediately acknowledged, and then the system lazily replicates these writes in the background, making them eventually durable. So the system is fast, but the problem is that the system can only enable weaker consistency guarantees because it's possible that if a failure arises before the data item is made durable, then the data item would be lost and it exposes uh, weaker consistency guarantees. Given this, a natural question arises. Is it possible for a durability layer to enable both strong consistency and high performance? In this work, we answer the question as yes, if we design the durability layer carefully by taking into account the consistency model the system is intending to provide, then we say that we can achieve both strong consistency and high performance. And we call this approach consistency of our durability, or in short, CAD. So we realize that what values read C is important for most consistency models. And with this key realization, the key idea here is to shift the point of durability from writes to reads. That is, the system would may ensure that the data is durable by replicating it, persisting it on many nodes before serving out the reads. By delaying the durability on writes, we get good performance. But at the same time, by making sure that the data is durable before it is returned on reads, we get stronger consistency guarantees, even in the presence of failures. However, note that uh, we may lose some updates if failures arise uh, if data before the data items are read. However, uh, we find that this uh, guarantee is useful for many applications that currently use uh, eventual durability for performance, in that we improve the consistency guarantees for these applications. In this work, we show how one such stronger consistency that we call cross client monotonic reads can be efficiently realized atop the durability layer that we are providing. So in this work, we design cross client monotonic reads and consistency of our durability for leader-based majority systems. And uh, we implement our changes in Zookeeper, and the system, is, the system that we build is called Orca. So compared to a zoo, uh, version of Zookeeper that provides strong consistency guarantees, Orca is much faster because it uses consistency of our durability, whereas the strongly consistent Zookeeper uses immediate durability and then it's slow. Uh, because we allow reads at many nodes, uh, we offer higher read throughput and our latencies are lower. And we perform very close to a weekly consistent Zookeeper that uses fast eventual durability, but at the same time, we provide much stronger consistency guarantees than a weekly consistent Zookeeper. 
We also experimentally show ORCA's guarantees under failures, and we show how these guarantees are useful for many applications. So that was the introduction to the talk, and here is the outline for the rest of my talk. First, I'll uh, provide the motivation for the, for the new durability model that we introduce in this paper. And then I'll introduce the key ideas, CAD and cross client monotonic reads. And then I'll introduce our design, and then present some results, and then finally summarize and conclude. OK, let's be realistic. This is the last talk of the conference. So you really want to get out of this conference as soon as possible, and sooner if the talk is not interesting. So you take out your phone, and you book a ride. And this ride-sharing app shows the latest location of the car that's coming to pick you up. And depending on the storage system that is providing you this location, your experience can be either very happy or very sad. So at one end, if the storage system is providing linear accessibility, as the car is making progress towards you, it will show the latest location. In other words, linear accessible system will always give out latest data, and it will prevent any stale reads. Now, even if you open a different app, let's say your browser, and look at the location, it will still show the latest location. That is, a linear accessible system would prevent out-of-order states across multiple client sessions. Here, it's your browser and your app. On the other hand, if the system is using eventual durability, it's possible that at one point, this car, your app shows that the car is nearby. So you're happy, you pack your bags, you get ready to leave, and then you close the app again and open it, only to notice that the car is far away and you're sad. What happened here is that the car did not go back on the route that it came on. Rather, the storage system exposed an older location after exposing the newer locations to you, thus exposing out-of-order states across uh, the two different client sessions. Note that this is possible even with models like uh, monotonic reads and uh, causal consistency, which offers in-order states within a single session, but not across multiple sessions. So those were the consistent, different consistency models and their guarantees. Now let's look at how we can implement these consistency models in a different system. So to achieve strong guarantees like linear accessibility, we require immediate durability. That is, on a write, we need to make sure that the write is synchronously replicated and persisted on many nodes in the system. Let's look at this with an example. Let's say we have three nodes in the system, and let's say we have an update. This update needs to be synchronously replicated and persisted on many nodes in the system before we can acknowledge the client here. Now, even if, at this point, even if many nodes crash and recover, the update is still safe, and a new client will be able to read the latest update. However, the downside is that the system would be too slow because of the synchronous operations that we are doing in the critical path of writes. In fact, uh, immediate durability is sometimes 10x slower than eventual durability when we re have replicas within a data center. And this could be much worse when the replicas are distributed across multiple data centers. On the other hand, to provide uh, weaker guarantees, weaker models only require eventual durability. That is, uh, on a write, the data is just buffered in one node's memory and immediately returned. So here, uh, we have a uh, data item A for which we have multiple updates A0 and A1. A0 is durable because it's present on many nodes, but A1 is just buffered on one node's memory and immediately returned. Now, in this client session, it's possible that a client reads A and notices the latest value A1. Now, since A1 is just buffered in one node's memory, it's possible that if S1 crashes here, the data item would be lost. And since S1 crashed, the uh, client establishes a different session now. And in this new session, it's when it reads this data item A, it will notice an older value, A0, than what it saw in the previous version. Thus, reads go back in time, exposing out-of-order states across multiple client sessions. Although this is valid under models like causal consistency and monotonic reads, this provides confusing semantics for applications. However, many deployments prefer eventual durability for performance. In fact, it's the default configuration in many popular systems like MongoDB and Redis. And hence, these deployments settle for weaker consistency guarantees. So to summarize this section, immediate durability enables stronger consistency guarantees, but it is too slow. On the other hand, eventual durability is fast, but it can only enable weaker consistency guarantees. So to this end, in this work, we introduce a new durability model that we call 
consistency of our durability, which I'm going to describe now. So we first realized that for most consistency models, they care about what values they see upon reads. So based on this intuition, the key idea behind consistency of our durability is to shift the point the system makes the data durable from writes to reads. That is, similar to eventual durability, we delay the durability of writes. We just buffer an update on one node's memory and immediately acknowledge the client. And this gives us good performance. However, unlike eventual durability, we ensure that the data, is a data item is made durable before we give out the data item on reads. That is, let's say a client wishes to read a data item that's not yet durable. We synchronously replicate this data item and persist them on many nodes before we return the read. This enables us to provide, uh, prevent out-of-order states across multiple client sessions and thus provide stronger consistency guarantees, even in the presence of failures. So one might ask if CAD will give good performance because it might incur a synchronous cost of synchronous operations on every read. The answer is no. We note that for many workloads, it's natural that reads do not immediately follow writes. So by the time the read comes, the data item is already durable because there is rap background replication and persistence that's going on in the system. So the common case here is that by the time the read arrives, the data item is already durable and we serve out the read immediately, so we are performant. Upon CAP, we realize cross-line monotonic reads, which is a stronger consistency property. So let's take a look at what guarantees we provide. Under cross-line monotonic reads, a client will at least see the latest state that was written to any previous read from any previous client. Let's look at this with an example. Let's say we have many updates a0 to A2 for a data item A. Now let's assume that a client reads this data item and notices a value A2 in a particular session. Now, even if a different client or the same client in a different session reads this particular data item, it is guaranteed to see at least A2. So and this is what we mean by preventing out-of-order states across multiple client sessions. And we provide this guarantee even in the presence of failures and across multiple client sessions and across client disconnections. To the best of our knowledge, only linearizability provides this uh, guarantee as uh, cross-client monotonic reads in that it prevents out-of-order states across clients. However, uh, linearizability is slow because it requires immediate durability. On the other hand, CAD enables this property with high performance. We do note that CAD does not prevent staleness, like many other weaker models. However, it, as I said earlier, it prevents out-of-order states across client sessions, which is useful for many practical applications like location sharing and social media, timeline, etc. So these were the key ideas in the paper. Now I'll talk about how we implement these ideas in a real system. So we implement these ideas in uh, leader-based majority systems. In a leader-based system, we have a single dedicated node that's called a leader. And then all the other nodes are called followers. All the updates flow through the leader, and then the leader establishes a single order for all the updates in the system. In a majority-based system, a data item is considered safe and durable if it has at least reached the disks on a majority of nodes. So that is, if you have five servers, the data item is considered durable if it at least reaches three disks. So the write path, as I told you earlier, is very similar to that of an eventually durable system. On a write, we just buffer the update on one node's memory and immediately return. So we are fast. And then we uh, do replication and persistence in the background. However, the read path is more involved. That is, we need to make sure that the data item is durable before serving out reads. Let's look at this with an example. So here we have three servers and two data items, A and B. A is durable because it's present on the disks of at least a majority of nodes. And then B is not because it's just buffered in one node's memory. Now let's say a client wishes to read A. Before serving out this update, we need to check if A is durable or not. So to perform this check, Orca maintains something called a durable index for the entire system, which denotes the index of the latest durable item in the entire system. Additionally, Orca also maintains an update index for every item that's present in the system, which denotes the index of the latest update that modified that particular data item i. And then we perform a durability check on a read. 
So where we compare the uh, update index of the data that's being read and the durability index of the system. If the update index of the system is lesser than the durable index of the system, then the item is durable. So here, A is durable, so we return A immediately. Now let's say we want to read B. B's update index is 2, which is greater than the durable index of the system. So Orca makes sure that B is durable by replicating and persisting it on many nodes before serving out B. Now, even if the current leader crash, crashes and a new leader is elected, B remains durable. So if reads are just restricted to the leader, just consistency of durability alone would provide cross-line monotonic reads. However, this approach is not scalable. But if we allow reads to proceed at all the followers, it's possible that a read goes to a follower that does not have all the data and then expose out of order states. OK, let me illustrate this with an example. Let's say we have five servers. We have updates A1 and A2 for a particular data item A. So here A1 is durable because it's present on all the disks, whereas A2 is not durable. Now let's say that a client wishes to read A on, lead, on the leader of the system. The durability check will now fail because A2 is not durable. So the leader tries to make A durable by rep replicating and persisting on many nodes. However, before the leader could make the item durable on S5, let's say the S5 is partitioned from the rest of the cluster. But the read will succeed because we have at least made this item durable on a majority of nodes. However, at a later point in time, it's possible that a different client or the same client contacts this partition node and then tries to read this data item A. Here, the durability check at S5 will succeed because according to S5, A1 is durable, and S5 does not know that the rest of the system has served out a new year value for this particular data item. So S5 ends up serving A1, which is an older value, thus exposing out of order states and violating cross client monotonic reads. So we need some additional mechanisms on top of CAD so that we can still allow reads at all nodes and provide cross-client monotonic reads. And we call these additional mechanisms, uh, we implement these additional mechanisms in an active set. Uh, at a high level, active sets use uh, least space mechanisms uh, so that it can allow, still allow reads at all nodes and provide cross-client monotonic reads. But for the purpose of this talk, I'm going to skip active set. But I'm, I'd be happy to talk offline later about this idea. So that was the design. Now I'll present some results. So we implemented our ideas in Zookeeper. And for this talk, I'll present two results. First, where we evaluate our different durability models in isolation. That is, we compare our new durability model, consistency of our durability, against the two existing durability models, immediate and eventual durability. And then we also evaluate the overall system performance. That is, we evaluate our system ORCA and compare it against two existing configurations of Zookeeper. One is strong, another is weak. So let's first look at the durability layer in isolation. Uh, we evaluate this using a workload YCSBA, which consists of 50% uh, writes and 50% reads. Let's look at the d distribution of uh, write latencies. And the x-axis here shows the latency, and the y-axis shows the distribution. So as expected, immediate durability is much slower than eventual durability. And CAD matches the performance for eventual durability for writes. Now let's look at reads. Here uh, we show the read latency distributions, and the x-axis shows the latency, and the y-axis shows the distribution. We would expect that uh, for reads, immediate durability and eventual durability would perform the same. But however, that's not what we notice. We observe that a number of reads uh, get stuck behind writes and hence incur high latencies because it has to see the it has to incur the path of uh, synchronous latencies of writes. So hence these reads incur high latencies. In CAD, most reads are fast because for most reads, by the time the read arrives, the data item is already durable. So CAD serves out the reads immediately. However, for a small percentage of uh, reads, uh, it incurs high latencies. But even for this uh, workload, which is a write away workload, the percentage is relatively small. It's just 5% of the reads that incur synchronous latencies. So overall, we observe that 
CAD uh, matches the performance of eventual durability and is much significantly faster than immediate durability. Now we compare the performance of our system and we compare the performance of our system Orca against two configurations of Zookeeper. First is a strongly consistent version of Zookeeper that provides strong guarantees because it uses immediate durability and rights are restricted to a single node. And then we compare Orca against a weakly consistent Zookeeper that provides weak guarantees and it uses eventual durability and it allows reads at all nodes. Orca uses CAD, and it also allows uh, to read. It also allows reads at all nodes. Here we show uh, the throughput of different workloads. We have uh, the workloads on the x-axis and the throughput on the y-axis. So higher is better. Strong Zookeeper performs poorly because of the two reasons that I told earlier. First, it, it uses immediate durability, and then it restricts all the reads to a single node. Weak Zookeeper is much faster because it uses fast eventual durability, and then it allows reads to proceed at all nodes. Orca closely matches the performance of uh, weak Zookeeper. In fact, it adds only little overhead because of uh, some synchronous of reads that happen in the critical path. And we observe the same for other workloads as well. So overall, CAD um, is much faster than uh, strong Zookeeper, and it adds only little overheads and almost matches the performance of eventual uh, uh, weak Zookeeper. Uh, in the paper, we have more experiments where we show uh, how Orca is correct in the presence of multiple failures, and we evaluate the correctness of our system using a rigorous cluster crash testing framework that we developed. And we also evaluate the performance of our system where we deploy the replicas across multiple data centers. And we also evaluate how Orca is useful for two different applications, the location sharing application that I was talking to earlier, and a social media timeline. So to summarize, although we have studied consistency for models for many years, we find that durability models are surprisingly often overlooked, and that there are only two durability models that systems currently use. In one approach that we called event immediate durability, immediate durability provides stronger consistency guarantees, but it is very slow. Another approach that we call eventual durability provides weaker consistency guarantees, but it is fast. So we introduced a new durability model in this paper that we call consistency aware durability, which enables both strong consistency and high performance. And given that many systems currently adopt eventual durability, CAD enables a way for these systems to realize stronger consistency guarantees without compromising on the high performance that they already get. More broadly, consistency and performance are seemingly often at odds. And in this paper, we show by how looking at a durability, underlying durability layer of the system, we can achieve both. With that, I'll conclude my talk, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Chen from Future, we here. If you look at the write request sending received by server to the next read request send received by server, there are four points here, data points. That you acknowledge the write. Yeah. Then the client received acknowledgement. Then the client has a subsequent read request. Then the server received the subsequent read request. Mm -hmm. So you are saying that. Um, due to the, the CAD is basically saying that as long as the client didn't receive the acknowledgement or the client doesn't remember the write happens, it's okay to drop the writes. Uh, we are not dropping the writes. We are just uh, making sure that the, uh, we do not enforce the durability of writes immediately. We just let the, uh, let the writes happen in the background. That is, we... In the background, we synchronously rep we, uh, replicate the writes uh, and persist them. Whereas uh, in the synchronous path of reads, we make sure that before serving out a read, the data item is already durable. Let elaborate what I mean by drop the write. So in, imagine the extreme case that mm -hmm. the server received the write request. Okay. It crashed and cannot recover. Yeah, so it is possible that we lose some updates if you have not yet uh, we have not yet seen some reads for those particular updates, and that's the trade-off that we make. 
uh, for uh, performance. However, note that uh, our target system is not a system that's currently using immediate durability. So we are not targeting applications that currently use immediate durability and require those strong guarantees. Rather, our target is applications that currently use uh, weaker consistency guarantees. I'm not consistency saying guarantee. it's wrong. It's just saying it's different. That's the subtle difference here. That so that's the trade-off that the, we make that here. So if you take an eventually consistent system, and then if you take applications that currently use eventually consistent system, we are trying to improve the guarantees for those applications while still not compromising on the performance. And our target application is not those applications that currently use a strongly consistent system and require those strong guarantees. Let me just need a break. I need a bit more. Okay. Uh, I think Do we take okay. this offline? I have so many uh, questions. I'm not so, saying that. It's a thing. As long as the client don't receive the acknowledgement, it's still okay. Well, it's Let's talk later about we can take this question offline. I'd be happy to answer more about this offline. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is um, Nelson from Future Way as well. Following the same thread, actually, my quick question is that um, it, whenever you the send back the acknowledgement from the right, um, the client cannot take it as the durability has been achieved. So uh, in that case, it's kind of like semantically, semantically they, what, what to do. Um, if they wanted the, strong, the durability to be achieved, they can issue a read after write immediately, right? So will that turn back into like a strong consistency model? Um, that's a, another quick question. Because I have a similar question, say if the uh, system crash at the time before read has been issued, how to treat that write? Yeah. Yeah. So, OK. Uh, Let's take a let's take a eventually durable system for example, and let's look at the applications that currently use eventually dur eventually durable system. Those applications already do not expect that the data item is will be durable upon a write. So we are targeting those applications. So we are not changing the semantics of writes for those applications. Those op applications are already already know that uh, an eventually durable system would lose some updates if uh, some crashes happen. Uh, before those items can be made durable. So that's the target application that we are uh, targeting. Yeah. I'm Jeff Canning, Harvey Mudd College. Um, you mentioned that you're taking advantage of the fact that many applications don't read immediately. Um, and I'm wondering where is the crossover point? Have you looked at um, you know, what kind of delays do you need from the application to make this advantageous, or what kind of applications, you know, how often do applications wait a moderately long time before reading? Yeah, so uh, we looked at uh, different workloads that are in uh, the workload suite of uh, YCSBB, YCSB, and uh, for all the workloads that we looked at, uh, most of the workloads uh, do not uh, immediately read the data item that they have just written. It, uh, there might be a lot of reads that's coming in, but it might be reading older uh, values that it wrote earlier. It's not that any read would trigger uh, synchronous operations. It's just that reads that access the non-durable uh, data item would uh, trigger synchronous operations. So as long as we are not reading the data item that we just wrote immediately, we would perform better. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering where the crossover point is. Uh, so the worst case workload would be something like we write something and then we read it immediately. So that sort of would be the worst case workload for our uh, system. And even for that, uh, we would still not perform worse than an immediate durable system. Okay. And um, we also looked at a worst case workload uh, in YCSBD where all the data, all the reads uh, read the latest item that was written into the system. And the distribution of uh, writes and reads for that workload is it uses 95% reads and 5% writes. So all the 95% reads read the 5% writes that's happening in the system. But only the first read uh, would trigger synchronous operations. So one, that first read would make sure that everything is durable. And then the further reads would be uh, efficient and unless we make some updates in the future. So that's sort of the workload that was worse for us. But even for that, uh, we incurred synchronous operations during these only for 5%, and our overall drop in throughput was around 8% for that workload when compared to a uh, weekly consistent system. Thank you. Right here. 
on the left. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Vasilita of IBM Research. So I'm just thinking that maybe there is a notable related work that is missing in the distributed file systems, right? When you have multiple clients, one of them writes something. POSIX doesn't require that to be durable, so we cache it, right? And, and then let's say the other client tries to read this data, and this is a time when we actually need to notify the first client to flush the data, make it durable, and then the first client can proceed and see the up-to-date information. So it is very close to what you're doing, but in the file, distributed file system world. Are you aware of this? Uh, so I'm not uh, familiar with the work that happened in distributed file system, but uh, there is a similar work that happened in local file system where, uh, called external synchrony, where they delay uh, durability on writes and make sure that uh, everything is durable before they externalize those writes. We have a very similar favor to uh, those systems. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, here uh, we are looking at uh, distributed storage system, but uh, yeah, we haven't, uh, we are not familiar with the work in distributed file we, systems. We can then chat after that. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, we can have uh, more questions. Uh, yes, uh, Tony Wong from uh, Dell Technology. Uh, I, uh, you mentioned you have to, uh, there's an index yeah. lookup, so I would like to know where you maintain that index. Is it in a distributed database or is it per node? So, so you know, what is the overhead in that lookup? Yeah, uh, so we maintain those index indices in memory on all the nodes. So specifically, we just maintain one index for the entire system on all the nodes, which is the durable index. And that indicates uh, the uh, index of the latest item that was durable. And then for every uh, key, we also maintain an additional information that denotes whether, that denotes the latest update that modified that particular data item. And uh, compared to Zookeeper, uh, we just add the additional overhead of just that one index, which is the durability index, because Zookeeper currently already maintains this update index for all the updates in the system. Chen uh, Po from Alibaba. Uh, I just want to check that uh, regarding your performance results, um, were all the reads served from the leader? Uh, no, uh, so we allow uh, reads to happen in uh, all the nodes in the active set. I, I did not cover what an active set was. So okay. active set is the mechanism that we implement so that we can still allow reads at uh, many nodes in the system, but still provide cross-client monotonic reads. Okay, so the active sets mechanism was in place uh, when you tested that uh, results. Yeah, the active set was in place. So the okay. performance results that I uh, showed for Orca includes the active sets as well. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Let's thank our speaker again. <laughs>